Welcome to this video. We are going to go through some basic, uh, kind of fundamental, algebraic tricks that we can use. These are things that we may have probably, may have and probably have learned already in the past. But the goal here is not just to know that they're true, or to see them and be like, okay, wait, I think, yeah, that's familiar, I've, I've done this before. The goal is to be really comfortable and really fast with these things, okay? So that's our goal. They will be familiar, but we are going to get fast. First thing up, we have something like this. This is an equation we know from physics. You have g out front, and the question in front of us is, where does the g belong? Does it belong in the numerator? Or maybe does it go to the denominator? Or it's multiplication here, right? So doesn't multiplication distribute? Should that go into the numerator and denominator? Let's take a look. If we put it into the numerator, we would have this. Whoops. We would have this. If we put it into the denominator, we would have this. Right? If we let it go down low. And if we let it go into the bottom and into the top, distribute, it would look like this. So which one is right? Well, to answer the question, first we'll begin at the bottom. On the bottom uh, equation, the g's cancel, right? In other words, we could take the g's there and break this into two fractions, g over g times m1 m2 over r squared. And g over g is 1. And 1 times m1 m2 over r squared, the whole right side just becomes a 1. Uh, sorry, an m1 m2 over r squared, like that. Hmm. So is this right? Is the bottom choice correct? If we distribute, then they cancel each other. And now, we see that that clearly is different from this, because this is missing the g altogether. So the bottom is not correct, because it would produce, it would actually just cause the g to disappear, and that's wrong. So we're going to take out the bottom. Actually, we're just going to, we're just going to put, put an x right here on the side. Eh, that's not it. What about the next one? Right, the next one up the middle. Well, to answer that, let's remember what this g actually is. g is equal to g over 1. Yeah? And so, I could take the g right here and replace it with g over 1. Because, yep. And when we multiply two fractions, we can combine the first with the second fraction. How do we combine? Well, you just take the g and you put it into the numerator, multiply it by uh, the rest of the numerator. And you take the 1 and you put it into the denominator, and you multiply it by the rest. So they join up with their friends, right? And then you just make that denominator bar a little farther over. So what do we have? We have g in the numerator and 1 in the denominator. And 1 times r squared is just r squared. So this right here is definitely not the second. The g doesn't go in the bottom. It goes in the top, as we now can see. So this is what we use. OK. OK. Let's do a quick example. There's another equation we'll learn later. It's k times q1 times q2 all over r squared. This equation is equal to k q1 q2 all in the numerator over r squared, because really it's k over 1. The 1 joins up, the k joins up in the numerator. The 1 is here, but we don't write it, because 1 times r squared is just r squared. Okay, on to the next thing. When we have something like a, b equals c, 
and we want to isolate the variable. Let's say we want to isolate A. What we do to isolate is we first check, is it in the numerator? Because we want it in the numerator. And then we check, is it alone on that side? Which side? Oh yeah, the left side, that's where it is. So first thing, is A in the numerator? We're trying to isolate A and we ask, is it on top? The answer is of course, yes. This is done. Is it all alone? No, it's not alone. There's a B right here next to it. So we have A times B, it's not alone. How do we get rid of the B? We multiply both sides by one over B. Hey look, we're gonna use our trick. On the right side, what we have is C over B. And on the left side, we could take the B, combine it with the one over B, to make B over B times A. And B over B is just one times A. And one times A is just A. So what do we do? I'm gonna take away the work and compare the top and the bottom. To get A all by itself, to get rid of B, we brought it to the right side. We got it out from the left from the left side because that's where A was, and A belongs on the left all by itself. So how did we get B from the left to the right? We took it into the denominator. That's what this shows. Right, that's our first cheat sheet note. Our first note. The next thing we can see, if we have something like this, a over b equals c, and we're isolating a again, first, is a in the numerator? Yes, it is. Second, is a all alone on that side? No, it's being accompanied by b. So how do we get rid of the b? We have to multiply both sides by b. This is b over b which is just one, and one times a is simply a. So the b over b cancels out, like that. And on the right side now, we have c times b. So what did we start out with? We started out with a over b, equals C, and then we isolated A by bringing B to the right from the left. And when we brought B to the right, it went from denominator to numerator. So we have now two rules, which are really just one rule. Whenever you want to remove B from one side and get it to the other side, it will always change from numerator to denominator or from denominator to numerator. You flip which side of the fraction it's on. So here's a more complex example where we're going to use this rule and we're going to do the problem really fast. Okay, here we are. Let's say we want to isolate A again. The first thing, is it in the numerator? Yes, it's already there. Second thing, is it alone? No. There's an x squared with it, there's a c on that side, there's a y on that side. So we have to get rid of every single one of those things. Okay. So I'm going to start out by just writing a long fraction bar on the right side, and I'm going to add in all of the three things that are already on the right. There's a k, there's an m, there's an r squared. And I know k is in the numerator. All right, look at the green things on the left. We have to get rid of each one. C is in the denom uh, C is in the numerator, excuse me. So it's going to come into the denominator. There, I took care of C. Y is in the denominator, so it's going to come into the numerator. I took care of Y. X squared is in the numerator, so it's going to go into the denominator. And just like that, I'm finished. Let's do one more. 
So let's say we have something a little different. We haven't seen anything like this. The force of gravity between mass 1 and mass 2 is equal to the force of gravity between mass 3 and mass 4. So the left side we could replace with g m1 m2 over the distance between them squared. We could do the same thing with the right side. We can divide both sides by g or multiply both sides by 1 over g. And what we see is on the left, on the left, g over g is 1, and that goes away. 1 times a fraction is just the fraction, just the fraction. On the right side, we have g over g, which is equal to 1, and that all goes away. All right then, now what I want to do is I want to isolate m1, okay? So I'm going to write it alone on the left side. It's already in the numerator, so I can simply get rid of the things that are on the left with it. Let's see, m1, I'm going to isolate m1. I'm going to put a long fraction bar on the right. Already on the right, I have m3, m4, and r3, 4 squared. Then I've got an m2, which is going to go down, and an r12 squared, which will go up, like that. And now I've isolated m1, easy as pie. Okay, the last thing. We have something like this. And I want to know, what does a over c equal? A over C. Hmm, let's think about our trick that we've learned. If C is in the numerator on the right, we can bring it into the denominator of the left. If B is in the denominator of the left, we can bring it into the numerator of the right. And if we make that, uh, make those, those moves, we have A over C, the unknown, is B over D, like that. Okay. So likewise, if we want, we could say, okay, take a and d and flip those. Right? a is in the numerator, so it's going to come over to the denominator. And d is down on the bottom, so it's going to come up. d comes up over the c. a went down over the b. So that's valid as well. All right, last thing then. Let's say we have a problem with three masses, and this mass m1 is bigger. We place m3 so that the net gravitational force on it is zero. m3 is being pulled to the left. The force of one on three is what's in green. m3 is being pulled to the right. The force of two pulling on 3 is now also shown in green. The total distance between the two is, let's say, 10 meters. Make it easy. The value of m1 is 2 kilograms. The value of m2 is, uh, let's make this 12 kilograms. And this one will be, ooh, we'll make it a nice number. We'll make it 3. Okay. So this will come out to a nice answer. And the task for us is to find how far M3 should be placed from M1. Okay. In other words, we're going to find the distance from 1 to 3. But we're going to also need to use this distance, which is from 2 to 3. Okay. All right, and we want to find R13. Now, our process is this. We have set up the location of M3. We've placed M3 so that F13 is equal to F23. F13 is replaceable with G times the product of the masses over the, di uh, over the square of the distance between them. So 3 is right here, remember, and 1 is here, and the distance between them is R13. 